We do a lot to cool our CPUs and other electronics. We buy fans and heat sinks and water coolers and radiators. But why? Let's check it out. First, let's look at why computer chips get hot. Processors at the lowest level are made up of tiny transistors. These transistors are arranged to make logic gates and those logic gates make functions, which are used to execute instructions. These transistors are actually a very simple concept. They're either on or off, much like a light switch. When they are turned on, they will let current flow through. When they are off, they block the flow of electricity. But how does this generate heat? There are some very basic physics to be known here. One of the fundamental laws says that energy never disappears, it just gets converted to other types of energy. So when something resists the flow of electricity, all of the energy that that electrical current has needs to turn into something, which is heat energy in our case. Now we can put all of these together. When modern transistors switch between on and off, the transition is not instant. During that time, the transistor acts as a resistor, which, as the name would suggest, resists the flow of electricity and therefore turns it into heat. So whenever a transistor switches, a tiny little bit of heat is generated. One transistor won't heat up your chip, but a modern processor may have hundreds of millions, if not billions, of transistors. Also, we've all seen that your CPU gets hotter when it's working harder. This should now make sense. The more work it has to do, the more transistors have to constantly be switching on and off again, and the more heat gets generated. In addition to this, every conductor has some resistance, so electricity flow through any wires in your house generates a bit of heat as well. But you won't need heat sinks and coolers for your light switches, because it's not a large amount of heat. But why do we cool our processors? Why do we spend so much money on heat sinks? So what if they get a bit hotter? Well, generally that's fine. One thing that you might hear is that if the CPU gets too hot, it will melt its solder. But that's not accurate, because solder used in CPUs right now has melting points upwards of 200 degrees Celsius. Your processor has protection mechanisms to prevent it from getting that hot. When it starts getting close to its maximum rated temperature, which is usually 90 to 95 degrees Celsius, it will start slowing itself down. If that doesn't help, it will shut down altogether to protect the hardware. So, on the one hand, we use coolers to make sure CPUs don't do this thermal throttling, which is the actual name of it, and that we always have maximum performance. But can you damage your chips by running them too hot? Well, it's not recommended to run them very hot for very long, as it may shorten their theoretical lifespan. When things get hot, they dilate, or get bigger. When they cool down, they get smaller again. Different materials dilate and shrink at different rates, which means that the different elements in your CPU are constantly shrinking and growing, causing very tiny wear and tear. So the smaller the temperature fluctuations, the better. Overall, if your CPU is commonly above 80C, you should do something about it. So I really do hope you enjoyed this video and if you want to see more you can click on the right to watch my latest video or on the left to watch a random video or just click the round channel icon in the middle to subscribe. And as always, this has been Vlad from Good Sauce Tech and I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.